I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the IWC Spitfire Perpetual Calendar Digital Date Month Flyback Chronograph Reference 379105. You can see this IWC Spitfire Perpetual on our website, watchyouwant.com. Purchase it there if you like. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches. 16 centimeters in circumference. This is the definition of an oversized sports watch. As a pilot's watch, you have to call this one a jumbo jet. 57 millimeters from extremity of lug to extremity of lug, 46 millimeters across the round portion of the case, diagonally opposed, and a burly 18 millimeters thick. This is not one to slip under a dress cuff or any kind of long sleeve, short of some sort of a flight suit. But the bottom line is, with a watch that has this much presence, detail, and charisma, you want it to be seen, not hiding under a cuff. Now, the ergonomic equation here is a little bit perplexing. On a small wrist like mine, I can wear it comfortably. Granted, it has the heft in gold, of a watch with an original retail price of $49,900. It feels like the luxury watch you imagine in your dreams. It has a lot of pull. And although it looks huge, I want to add that it fits well. Like this would be secure on my wrist if buckled down. Ultimately, whether this watch is for you comes down to whether or not you're comfortable with the idea of a truly oversized presence on your wrist. If you like a giant watch, either because you've got a huge wrist and you can't get enough size, or because you like the look of a bolder, more insistent case. If you like the modern Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore 44, the Hublot Big Bangs, and the King Powers in 48 millimeters, this is your watch, albeit with a pedigree to put any Hublot to shame. Now, first and foremost, I want to call attention to the digital date month function. What you're looking at is a perpetual calendar, IWC's traditional Kurt Claus perpetual calendar system, but rejigged for a different kind of portrayal of time. This one harks back to the 19th century IWC Paul Weber calibers that would display time in apertures using jumping hours, minutes, and such. During the 19th century, today we have a perpetual calendar, unlike the traditional IWC Kurt Claus perpetual, which features a moon phase, which features the day, date, month, and the year. This one features a discrete leap year at 6 o'clock, and then a date and a month, really giving you the most pertinent information. Because, let's face it, I think even here at the turn of the year from 15 to 16, most of us can guess which side we're on. So you want to know the date, you want to know the month, and because, realistically, a chronograph is the king of complications after a calendar function, IWC gives you a great one. Now, you can reset this in-house tri register chronograph conventionally like I just did. It is a vertical clutch system for a smooth coupling, no jump at the start, no stagger when you stop, always resets precisely, and it is a column wheel movement so you have that crisp pusher function. The tactile, the auditory sensation, the sound, the click, the snap of it is very pleasing. What sets this one apart is that not only is it a tri-register chronograph, but it's also a flyback. So you can stop, reset, restart in true aviator watch fashion without having to engage more than one pusher. The one touch, reset, and restart, the hallmark of a flyback, makes this one even a little bit more useful than a conventional chronograph. And with this ardoise sort of metallic gray sunburst motif, the lancet white seconds hand of the chronograph really jumps out at you. So this one's very good if you want to use it for practical purposes because it's one of those single glance watches. The legibility is that good. Now it is one of the Spitfire models, so since 2003 the Spitfire series has been an IWC pilot's watch above and beyond. Just a little bit finer in its detailing. Generally sunburst dials, applied Arabic numerals, and in this case an exquisite evolution the inclusion of a skeletonized winding rotor featuring the profile of the famed British elliptical wing interceptor from the Battle of Britain. This is the one that went after the fighters when the hurricanes went after the bombers. And it's a beautiful portrayal, but very discreet. This watch doesn't scream Spitfire or Battle of Britain from the front, but that is a touching tribute on the back. And for bonus points, the skeletonization about the fuselage and wings allows you to see the works below. So you don't have the traditional display Achilles heel of an automatic movement, which is a half-obscured movement thanks to the winding rotor. This one gives you a good view of what's going on beneath. Now the dial itself is beautifully laid out. There's a balance here that's quite becoming and appropriate to a pilot's watch. While this is truth be told, not strictly a navigation instrument of any kind. 
it nevertheless stays true to its heritage as a highly legible, highly readable instrument. Now I'm going to stop the chronograph, I'm going to reset it, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mono counter at 12 o'clock, because IWC really manages to clean up the triple register display like Omega has in recent years by featuring superimposed hour and minute hands at 12 o'clock on a mono counter. So you have the minute hand on the outer race, 0 to 60, and then inside you have 0 to 12 with a shorter hand. By superimposing them, IWC creates a vertical axis of subdials, and that's juxtaposed with a horizontal axis of the date and the month. So there's a nice cruciform balance, almost in the form of an aircraft fuselage and its wings, that really suits the pilot's watch. Now, all the detailing is rich, all applied rose gold, fully loomed Arabic numerals. You have beautiful broadsword hands with abundant loom. This is a watch that's easily viewed day or night. There's also a nice texture to the dial. In addition to the sunburst motif, there's a concentric circular guilloche above the, about the mono counter, as well as on the sub-seconds at 6 o'clock. And all of the windows are faceted, so they don't simply drop from the plane of the dial down to the month or the date discs. There is a little bit of a slope and a little bit of convergence at the corners of the apertures. The detailing is nicely done. It's everything you would expect of a watch of this caliber and billing. Now the movement, 51 joules, caliber, IWC in-house, 89801. 68-hour power reserve, bi-directional automatic winding. You can see this one featuring the unique Spitfire winding rotor. Free sprung for shock resistance and precision in the face of jolts. 68-hour power reserve, so if you feel this isn't a watch for all occasions, you can rotate through your rotation without constantly having to reset the complex indications of the watch. 68 hours is good autonomy for a watch driving this many independent functions. As mentioned earlier, it is a column wheel and a vertical clutch chronograph, so the latest technological refinements are included, and it uses IWC's more than 60-year-old Peloton Paul-based bi-directional winding system. Still highly rugged, shock-resistant, and efficient. This one is souped up a bit with four Pauls rather than the historic two Pauls. It's one of the best systems out there. It's been copied left and right by competitors, but IWC still does it better than anyone. And you can only say it's yours once. Now, the finishing standards are up to par for the high end of high horology. Gorgeous circular Cote de Genève skeletonized winding rotor. All of the screw heads are polished rather than heat blued and oxidized. This is a more honest portrayal, in my opinion, because it doesn't cover up any of the mistakes that may be made in the manufacture or finishing process. And there's a gorgeous black polished cover on top of the balance cock. A 4 hertz modern 28,800 vibration per hour rate ensures steady timekeeping. Like the free sprung balance, it's a modern standard that watch connoisseurs who are into movements have come to expect. This is a gorgeous watch. It's a lot of watch, aesthetically and in terms of the engineering inside, with a wonderful flyback chronograph featuring that mono counter. You can see the superimposed hands separating. You've got a chronograph for daily use. You've got a date to which you can refer daily. A very practical watch. While some might call it ostentatious, some might call it over the top, others in, well, the aviation parlance may call this one first class or a high flyer, and it's certainly that. You can see this IWC Spitfire digital date month perpetual calendar flyback chronograph and purchase it if you like on our website watchyouwant.com.